Hey folks, Mike Seeklander with the American Warrior Society and Wilson Combat, and in this week's Going Tactical, I'm going to talk to you about transitioning to a secondary weapon. It's going to be a very unique skill set that you're going to possibly need in the middle of a situation where things go bad and you run out of ammo or you have a malfunction. All right, folks, let's talk about the transition. And in this particular demonstration, I'm actually using the Wilson Combat AR9G, and I have one of the Glocks customized by Wilson Combat here inside my waistband, which is actually very exciting. But I want to talk to you about the concept of a transition and why you would transition and the mentality behind a transition. So uh, probably more of us civilian shooters would not have an opportunity to be transitioning from a rifle to a handgun and back and forth. But in a circumstance where, for whatever reason, you're armed with a long gun and you have a handgun on you, and uh, you have a circumstance uh, happen where you run out of ammo or you have a malfunction or something happens where you get what I would call a dead trigger. Meaning, you know, you're, you're trying to shoot the rifle and the trigger's dead, doesn't go bang. Um, you have a few options. A, you could stand there and do nothing, probably not a good option for you. B, you can attempt to solve the problem with the long gun. Now, in this particular case and what I'm teaching you today, I have an unloaded rifle, AR9G, I have an empty, uh, empty chamber and a magazine, empty magazine, and of course I have an empty Glock as well, okay? Completely unloaded handguns. So, in doing the transition, if I stand here and did nothing, that's not going to solve the problem. Fixing the rifle or the carbine may be a solution, but the downside to that solution is I don't know what's wrong with it. You know, I may have what I call a phase two or phase three malfunction, which means that, you know, I've got multiple rounds feeding up inside the chamber. Maybe I've got a bulge case. Maybe I've got something worse. Maybe my carbine or rifle has been shot. Maybe it's damaged beyond repair. And if I take the time to try to solve the problem or fix it, most of us are probably going to be at a distance where that threat could continue to engage or approach us. Now, if you're in a situation where you're behind cover, you're hiding behind a car, you're behind a good wall or whatever else, and you have the ability to fix the long gun, fix the long gun because the long gun is the superior fighting weapon. But if you don't know for sure what's going on with the long gun and you have a handgun and you're within a distance where the handgun is effective, I'm gonna tell you I think it's probably better that you transition to a secondary weapon. Understand very clearly though, the mentality of transitioning doesn't necessarily mean I'm just going to transition to my handgun, which is what I'm going to teach you today. It may mean I transition to something completely different. Transition from a shooting long gun to something where I'm striking. Transition from a long gun to a knife. Transition from a long gun to a combative technique. Transitioning is a mentality, and it simply means that you transition from a weapon system that's no longer functioning, i.e. a dead trigger, to something else at that moment in time. Because remember, every single second that ticks by may be a second where your life is in jeopardy. So you got to do something, and that's the first thing I want you to think about. Let's talk about the, strand, uh, the standard transition, however. So if I'm in a situation, threats in the living room, I've, I've grabbed my long gun, or I'm in a situation where I have a long gun and a handgun on me attempt to fire that long gun, or maybe I was already firing the long gun and I get a dead trigger. So let's define dead trigger. Literally, I pull the trigger, safety's off, everything is, is, I'm doing what I need to do, but the gun is not doing what it needs to do. The second I realize that dead trigger, and I'm at a distance where a handgun is effective, I don't want to look at the gun, I don't want to think about the gun, I don't want to pause and give away any more time, I want to immediately begin transitioning and getting the long gun out of my way, and I'm going to show you a little secret here. Secret tip that I like to use is when I rotate the long gun out of the way, I start to rotate it to the left. I'm a right-handed shooter, and I'm going to try to get the long gun to my left-hand side. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking to grab the long gun somewhere where the handguard and the magwell is. So I've got kind of a, a catch point here for my hand. And as I transition and start to move it out of the way, this hand is going to start the draw process. Now, for today's video, I'm actually carrying in the appendix position, but whether it's an appendix position draw process or a strong side draw process or wherever you carry your handgun, your strong hand is going to be immediately tracking that handgun. So in slow motion, I've got a dead trigger. I grab the, the rifle or the long gun, start to get it out of my way, and at that point in time, my strong hand is getting to the handgun and building that good grip. And remember for some of the previous handgun videos that we showed you, I'm literally taking that hand and driving it up the back strap of the gun itself. While I transition and guide the rifle or long gun out of my way, and there's a point where, and I'm doing this in slow motion for the camera, but there's a point where I would literally just let it go, 
so I can get my left hand involved. And remember, we talked a lot about building the grip with the second hand on the handgun. I need to get the left hand involved as soon as I possibly can so I can draw, extend, press, 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 and engage, okay? Now this is a point where I want you to start thinking about the processes that you're going through. If I've, if I've transitioned to a handgun, boom, 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 and I'm fighting with the handgun, what is my primary weapon right now? And you may think, well, the long gun, it's the bigger, badder, better rifle, all right, better system, right? No, the primary weapon right now is the handgun. Because for what I know, the long gun doesn't work. It's dead, I had a dead trigger, something's wrong with it, okay? So this is a primary weapon. So I want you to consider fighting with this weapon and then you know, going through your post-shooting actions. That may be you know, moving to cover, uh, getting to a better position, doing different things that you would do. But right now, this is my primary weapon. I, this one doesn't exist to me, it's just hanging on my body. And then, when you're at that point where you're safe, the fight's over, maybe you've moved to a better position to cover, whatever else, you know, the, you're not in the middle of the actual fight itself. At that point in time, while I keep the handgun out, I'm gonna grab the other system and I'm gonna assess. And what I'm doing here is, I still have this gun to fight with if I need to, maybe another threat pops out of wherever, right? But I'm doing, doing my best to assess and actually manage this other weapon system and find out, well, you know, can I fix it? You know, it, does it look like it's shot up or it's broke or it's damaged or you know, it's jammed beyond repair? And if I can fix it, then I'm gonna safely holster the handgun up to go to a position to control. We talked about that a lot in previous videos. My typical position to control is gonna be somewhere where the tip of the stock is under my arm. I can control the, you know, a rifle or a carbine at this point. It's not loose and all over the place. It's not down low, you know, where it's pulling my vision down here because, you know, the threat is not down here. The threat is out here, okay? So I'm gonna to go to that position to control. I realize, hey, the bolt is just locked to the rear. I can perform a reload grabbing that new magazine, insert that magazine, let the bolt go forward, and now I'm back up in the fight with the long gun itself, okay? So let me set that up one more time for you. So empty magazine in the gun. Let me retrieve my magazine. When you're working these kind of skills, you know, I, I say this all the time and I wanna remind you, you don't need to necessarily go to the range. I'm gonna give you a life eye drill that you can use you know, here in the next few days when you go to the range, and I hope you do, but you don't have to work the skill set by going to the range continually. You could set up a similar drill that I am right now with you know, dummy rounds or empty magazines, a handgun you know, and a rifle and or carbine, and just practice the skill set. Go through it nice and slow. Remember, anytime you're trying to learn something, we have to practice it at that conscious speed where we can go through all of the steps properly before we start to pick up the pace. And you don't have to go to the live fire range to do that, okay? So the transition would be as follows. Mount the rifle, try to fire the gun. I get a dead trigger. The dead trigger is a key component of this technique. I need some stimulus to give me a thought process response. Meaning the stimulus is I pull the trigger and then my brain starts screaming, it's not working. I've got to do something. I've got to transition to a secondary weapon, okay? In that transition, finger comes off the trigger, start to control the rifle. I'll go a little faster here. Wipe the rifle out of the way, start to draw the Glock out of the holster. Boom, boom, boom. Fight's over with. Scan, post assess, whatever you would normally do. Get to a safer position, you know, a position to cover. And only when I'm safe, then I'm gonna grab that, Secondary system, I'm gonna bring it up to me, not my vision down to it, and I'm gonna assess. Okay, I see the bull lock to the rear. I'm pretty sure I can fix that. Safely holster up the handgun, go to my position to control, reload, and I'm back up and ready to go. And I've got this system back up and running, okay? So that's the full transition process. The flow is critically important. The second the trigger shows you that it's dead, gun won't work. You've gotta get the, you know, the long gun out of the way, get the handgun into the fight. Finish the fight. Don't worry about this right away. Finish the fight. Get to a safer position, a better position, a position to cover. Then assess. Can you fix it? Or is it damaged beyond repair? If it's damaged beyond repair, you know, get it back out of your way or jettison it. It doesn't really matter to you at that point in time. Then fix the long gun, get it back in the fight, and now you're good to go, okay? So there's your process, something for you to follow. It's a very logical flow, but you've got to go through those steps. So now that I've taught you the transition, here in a few days, we're gonna release another video that you could take to the range and practice it live fire.